Hello, welcome to Maths with J. We want to write this fraction as separate partial fractions and it's a special case because we've got a repeated factor. The x minus 1 is being squared. So what that means is that that will give rise to two separate fractions. So we know that we will have one fraction with a denominator just of x minus 1. So let's put an a on top of that. And we will also have x minus 1 squared. And we'll put a b on top of that one. And then as usual, when we're doing partial fractions, when we've got linear factors, the other factor, 2x plus 3, will give us our denominator for our last fraction. And then it's just a matter of adding these fractions together. So when we do that, we know that we're going to get a denominator exactly the same as the one we started with. And then it's just a matter of working out what each fraction is going to be. So the first one, well, we've multiplied the denominator x minus 1 by x minus 1 and 2x plus 3. So we multiply the a by the same thing. So that's going to be x minus 1 and 2x plus 3. And then looking at the next fraction, we've multiplied the denominator x minus 1 squared by 2x plus 3. So that's what we'll multiply b by. So it's all just equivalent fractions and I haven't left enough space have I so let's just extend that line a little bit further and then the 2x plus 3 we've multiplied by x minus 1 squared so that's what c has to be multiplied by and that just goes along a little further too right okay and now looking at our two fractions the original one and the one I've just written down the denominators are the same, so we know that the numerators are going to be the same. So that makes life a lot easier. So what we've now got is that 19x minus 9 is identically equal to all this that we've just written at the top of this big fraction. So now what we want to do is simply find a, b and c. The simplest thing to do is to substitute in values for x that will make some of these brackets become zero. So remember, because this is an identity, we can substitute in any value for x that we like. But the simplest thing to do is to start off with zeroizing some of these brackets. So let's go for the x minus 1 first of all. If we want x minus 1 to be zero, then that means that we want x to be equal to 1. So if we substitute in x equals 1 to both sides of the expression, the left-hand side is going to be 19 times 1 minus 9, so 19 minus 9. So now we've got equals rather than identically equals. a will be multiplied by 0 because x minus 1 is 0. And then we've got b multiplying 2 times 1 plus 3. And then c will also be multiplied by 0. So we can see that we very easily found what b is. So we've got 19 minus 9 is 10. b is being multiplied by 5. So we found already b. b is 2. And then, not quite as simple, let's put the other bracket to 0. So 2x plus 3. So 2x plus 3 is 0 gives us that 2x is negative 3. So x is negative 3 over 2. So let's see what that gives us. So that will give us on the left hand side 19 multiplying negative 3 over 2 minus 9. And then on the right hand side, well, a will multiply 0, so will b. So all we're left with on the right hand side is c multiplying negative 3 over 2, take away 1, squared. So not quite as easy to work out as the previous one, but not too bad. If we uh, work out the left-hand side, um, if we leave it as a top-heavy fraction, you could do it as a decimal if you want. So that would be minus 75 over 2. 
And then we've got um, minus 5 over 2 being squared. So that's going to be 25 over 4 multiplying C. And that would then give us that C is negative 6. So fairly straightforward to work out the values for B and C. So now we want to find A, but we've run out of brackets to zeroize. Remember though that the identity holds for any value of x at all, so you can substitute in any value of x to both sides of the expression. So one possibility would be zero, because that's relatively simple, isn't it? But another way of thinking about this is instead of substituting in values of x, you could actually equate coefficients. And quite a good one to do would be x squared. The reason for that is there are not many of them around. If you look on the left hand side, there are no x squareds. On the right hand side, a is going to be multiplying x squared and some number and the c is. So really, it's not going to be too bad to do that. And so let's have a look at what that gives us. So we're equating coefficients of x squared. So on the left hand side, there are no x squared at all. So the number multiplying x squared is zero. On the right hand side, looking at the term in a, a is multiplying x and 2x. So x times 2x times a. So, so the number multiplying x squared is 2a. And then b, well, that's not multiplying an x squared at all, is it? We've only got 2x plus 3 there. So that's dealt with that. And c, well, when we multiply out x minus 1 all squared, we're going to get 1x squared in there, apart from the other terms. So simply by looking at what's multiplying x squared, we just get 0 is 2a plus c. And we've just found what c is, so that's 2a minus 6. So 2a is 6, and a is 3. So we have found all three numbers that we set out to find. So let's just substitute those in. So a is 3, b is 2, and c is minus 6. So it would be better, instead of writing the minus 6 like that, if we replaced the plus in front of the fraction by a minus and just had 6 on top. And there we are. So that's the answer.